Let me show you what this bad boy can do. Hey, welcome back to Titanium Man Garage. And today we're going to be working on a 2002 Sportsman 500HO. Nice looking camouflage one. I'm going to show you what I got going on because uh, a lot of people are asking me questions on this. So when I go to start this thing, in the overflow tank here it starts to bubble and coolant spits out. And I did notice uh, I'm getting a little vapor out of the uh, tailpipe. Um, it's not white smoke, it's just uh, kind of a vapory, wettish kind of look to it. Backstory on this is the guy ended up rebuilding the thing and put a new head gasket in and everything and he complained about overheating issues. So my guess is he never checked to see if the head was warped or not. Probably put a flimsy gasket in and it's probably pushing compression back into the coolant lines and that's what's causing it to, to bubble in that tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear this head off take it all apart and check to see how level that head is. That's going to tell me everything right there. Um, I'm about 100% sure that's the issue. Uh, there would only be one other issue, it would be the thermostat. might be uh, blocked off. Uh, and I checked that already. And oddly enough, the thermostat was messed up. The spring was really messed up when I pulled the thermostat out, so it wasn't opening and closing properly. At first I thought that was the issue. I thought, oh, easy fix wrong. So yep, I got a little coolant coming out of the exhaust and bubbles coming out of the, I call it the puke tank, uh, the puke tank and we're going to see what's going on. So another thing I'm going to check here, another telltale sign is I'm going to pull a spark plug. I got it loose already and I want to see if that spark plug's wet. If it's wet, it's telling me coolant's getting in there. Alright, huh, that's actually a first. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. It's dry, it needs a new plug. So that tells me the, uh, the gasket is somewhat working, but uh, for some reason it's blowing back into the coolant lines. So I'm still gonna check that head, make sure it's not warped, and go from there. Okay guys, I hate to burst your bubble on this one, but I already put out three videos on how to replace a head. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a link and you can see how I did it. Um, if you look at some of my videos about the, the Polaris Ranger and a 99 Sportsman I did, um, I pulled the head off. and Yeah, I could videotape that, but you know, it'll be another three hours long and I don't want to make this video too long. So. Alright guys, so here's where I'm at. I like to remove as much as possible to get the head off. So I took the shift linkages off, comes off with a 10 millimeter. Pull the exhaust pipe off, took the springs off. Yeah, it was a little bit of a pain. Um, I took the eight bolts off the cover, rocker cover, and I looked at the cam. The cam actually looks really good. I pulled the carbon air box off, so that's all ready to go. Um, I've got maybe 20 minutes into this. Um, I also did pull the uh, water pump cover off. I wanted to make sure that that spun when I pulled the rope, and it does. And uh, I just moved it now, but uh, I did put the engine at top dead center. You want the engine at top dead center before you um, pull the head off. So I'm actually going to put that back. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the tensioner off. This is your timing chain tensioner. I'll pull this cover off. I'll get the chain off unbolt that and I also have my uh, as you can see my coolant uh, lines disconnected and drained so hopefully it won't be so messy when I pull it apart so and then you got these 14 millimeter bolts that come off you can just use a, a 12 point 14 millimeter socket to get all four of these off I know I've got a bad, bad view here but it's one here one here one here one here and once you get everything disconnected, that's a slide right off. Now what I'm seeing is I see a flimsy little gasket here. So um, I hate to knock products here, but my guess is it's a 
a niche um, piston and gasket. Not knocking niche, but uh, the gasket they put in with the kit is really flimsy. My guess is the gasket didn't hold up. It's holding up enough to where there isn't coolant going into the piston, but it's um, blowing back into the coolant, causing the bubbles in the overflow tank. So I'm going to pull that off, inspect it, make sure the head is flat, put a Polaris brand gasket in. Guys, they're only like 49 bucks if you go on eBay. Spend the money, do it right. So I'll keep going. Alright guys, so I got everything disassembled like I said. Tensioner's gone, cover's gone. Um, I took the three 10 millimeter bolts out of the uh, cam uh, gear. I've got my little little cheater hook. I got the chain hung up. Uh, there's two 10 millimeter bolts here. Yeah, you want to see something funny? I went to go loosen the head bolts, and this one's loose already. I can turn it by hand. So that's why it was leaking. So I'm gonna pull all these four bolts off. Like I said, it's um, 14 millimeter with uh, 12 point. I'm gonna buzz them off, check that gasket, and I'm gonna replace it with a good Polaris gasket. But there's my problem, loose head bolts. So whoever did this didn't do the torque specs correctly um, for Polaris. Um, you uh, get a manual that says everything in there. I can kind of rattle it off, but I don't even remember it by hand. I think it's uh, start out with 22 foot pounds, then up to 52, then you back it off two turns, then you torque it to 11 foot pounds, then it's a quarter turn on each bolt, another quarter turn on each bolt. So you're driving it in, you're backing it off. Uh, the reason behind that is the bolts do stretch, so you want to make sure they're in tight. Um, I used to work at an engine plant. We did the same thing with brand new engines. So I'm going to pull this head off and show you what I got. Okay guys, got her pulled. And uh, yeah, I pretty much called that one. Look at this cheap piece of crap. That's garbage. Why would you put that in your machine? Uh, there's only three thin layers. No, actually four thin layers. Um, let me show you a good Polaris gasket. This is a good Polaris gasket. It's nice and thick. There's actually a thick layer of metal in there. It doesn't bend. I'm flexing on it. I mean, if I really put pressure it would bend, but it's nice and solid. It's got a uh, ceiling edge on there. What does that have? <laughs> China junk. Kiss that goodbye. Um, I'm gonna check the surface of the head. I'm guessing, uh, I'm hoping that's actually pretty smooth and I won't have to worry about it. It actually looks like the guy did some refinishing on it. I can see some scratch marks. I might uh, clean that up a little nicer. Uh, get rid of the scratch marks. Finish it off with 600 grit. Put this head gasket back in, tighten the, uh, the head down to the proper torque sequences, and call it a day. That should be it. So like I was saying before, if you buy a piston kit online, uh, like I said I wasn't really knocking the piston, but the gaskets that come with it, the head gasket, they're usually junk. Um, you can go ahead and buy the whole kit if you want, but just go out and buy yourself a Polaris head gasket, a good one, because otherwise this is what's going to happen. All right, another thing I wanted to show you, you kind of see right here on the edge, this is all sealing tight. So there wasn't any coolant getting into the piston, that's why the spark plug was dry. But you can see the outer ring, these are the, the coolant ports. Um, you can tell something was getting in there. So uh, I'm guessing there, it was probably sealing enough where the coolant wouldn't get in, but uh, with the compression stroke, it was probably blowing back into the cooling ports as you can see and that's what was causing the, the blowback and the bubbles in the uh, overflow tank and in the radiator. Um, I actually had the radiator cap off and uh, hit the throttle and it just shot right out the radiator. So yeah, I was building up pressure in the cooling system and uh, you can see that's the reason why. Um, you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it in here, but there are some scratch marks. My camera's not focusing for some reason, so I apologize for that. 
Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up, make it right, put it back together. So one last thing I'm gonna do, only cause uh, that guy didn't torque that down, I don't trust his torque specs when he rebuilt this engine, is there are four 12 millimeter bolts in here, or they really got 12 millimeter head. I'm gonna go ahead and torque them down to 49 foot pounds, that's where they belong. Just kind of double check his work, and I'm gonna put it back together. All right guys, I'm gonna try to show you this. This isn't easy to do with a camera, but I'll take the head, and I'll go in a crisscross pattern with a straight edge, and look up into the light. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's light in between there. Same with here. And this side actually rocks back and forth a little bit. So, you want to do it right, you can take it into a machine shop, have that head machine smooth. It's not that far off. I'm going to take um, a little 320, sand it out, and finish her off with some 600 grit. Done it about 20 times. I've never had an issue with it. I'm going to clean that up, put her back together. But so you guys know what to look for. I mean, I go crisscross, there is light underneath there. So, and there's that. All right, so I'm using a little PB Blasters cutting oil. I got my 320 grit. Um, as you can see, I already started sanding. You can see the high and low spots. There's low spots here. So I'm gonna keep going. I go in a crisscross pattern. This way first, I'll flip it. Go this way, we gotta take off a lot of material, go really fast back and forth. I don't think I'm gonna have to take much off. Now when I finish it off, I try to give it a little spin, just so if any marks, any sanding marks you get are in a circular pattern, and it'll help from any leaks. That's cleaning up pretty nice, and I'll finish that off with 600 grit wet dry sandpaper. That's looking pretty good. Got most of the uh, little spots down. There's a little oxidation here. I took the uh, straight edge and I went across both ways. I'm not seeing any light, which is a good sign. All right, and just to let you guys know, I did surface that uh, piece on something flat. A uh, piece of glass works really well. I have a flat piece of large tile. So I got her nice and smooth. I got the uh, thicker head gasket in. Um, I'm at the point of the timing chain now, so I had that on a hook. Um, I used to just go ahead and try to hook it back up and try to get it to line up, but you never know where you are with the uh, flywheel line with the uh, the gear. So what I uh, learned over the years, it's, it's a lot easier to pull a flywheel off. And that's actually really nice and clean. I know the lighting sucks over here, but so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off, pull the stator off, and uh, line up the timing marks with the crank. And there's a silver link on the chain that'll go down here. And there'll be two silver links that line up with the two indents on the cam gear. That way I know my timing is dead on. I don't have anything to worry about. You know, not that I just throw that cam gear in with a chain like that. I'm guessing, I'm guessing where exactly the right point is the top dead center. I don't want to guess, so I want this right, so that's the way I'm going to do it, and I suggest you guys do the same thing. Um, just takes a little guesswork out, not that you get this all back together and you're like, ah, oh, why does it run like crap? Is the timing off? Is there something wrong with the carb? That way you know your timing's on and you're good to go. So yeah, I got the bolt, or I got the nut pulled off of here, puller, Pull that bad boy off, pull the stator off to check my timing marks, line up the chain, put the cam in, the cam gear in, and uh, we'll get the valves adjusted, make sure the valve lash is correct. I do have videos on how to rebuild an engine. I didn't want to make this video long, um, you know, going step by step. Still got to do my torque sequence up here for all four bolts. I just got them snugged up right now. Um, what I like to do is um, I like to get it on there put the uh, the motor mount on so this whole thing doesn't twist and go through my torque sequence and then uh, you know line everything up put the tensioner back in check my valve lash should be point, point zero zero six 
And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. You know, once you get used to doing this, it's actually not that bad. Um, I got I'm going on three hours. I did take a little break for lunch, so maybe two hours. And uh, we'll see how this thing turns out. All right, guys. So this is what I mean by guessing. You know, you see the chains all hung on there. There's two silver links down here. They should be at the top. So if I were to put this all back together, I wouldn't know for a fact where my timing marks are. So I'm gonna go ahead. You got uh, a little lighting sucks in here. There's two dimples on top of here. That'll line up with the two silver links. So I'm gonna rotate this whole chain, get everything lined up where it's supposed to be. Yeah, and we are close. Turn a little bit. And I wanna line everything up so it's in the right position. Part can be a little bit of a trick. That can be done. There's my one silver link at the bottom. Go ahead and line that up with the timing mark on the gear, the crank gear. Oh, come on. Okay. Pull that straight up. That's a little bit where it's supposed to be. And then up here, there's two silver links. Grab my cam gear, put that in place. I'm just gonna push this back. Normally I do this on the other side of the shop where the lighting's a little better. But I back this thing in and one more tooth. Here. Uh, let's put a bolt in here just so it stays in place. Another good part about um, pulling the uh, stator off is I can kind of check the oil too. I'm sure I probably got some coolant in the oil. Let me grab a glove here, but so you got two silver links with the two little indents up here, and then down at the bottom there's a silver link, and that lines up with the timing mark. Now I know my timings perfect the top dead center so when I put the uh, uh, when I torque everything down and then I set the valve lash I know I'm right where I need to be so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put those cam bolts back in uh, torque my head down now you notice I didn't torque the head down first I did that for a reason just in case I had to move this out of the way uh, I have to take the head back off so I like to get the timing chain in place before I torque everything down. And that's just me. Uh, I don't know if there's a right or wrong way to do it, but I just found it's easier for me to do it that way. So, All right, fast forward two hours later. Uh, I did have to torque the jug bolts down because uh, the guy didn't have that torque correctly. Got everything all back together. Did the torquing sequence for the head. Uh, got everything all put back together nice. Go to fire it up and kind of ran funny so ended up taking the carb apart I found some dirt in the jet got her all back together and let me show you what this bad boy can do up. 
got the fan hot wired. So we'll just fire it up. Puke tank isn't gurgling anymore. Not backfiring like it used to. She should run pretty smooth now that I adjusted the timing. Alright guys, so if you got a uh, little back pressure in your cooling system, maybe it's uh, backfiring a little bit, you got something funky going on, check that flimsy head gasket, see if uh, somebody put one in there, or maybe the head's warped, who knows, you know, sometimes you buy something, you never know what you're going to get. I thought I got a good deal with uh, the guy rebuilding the engine, and it turned out to be a little bit of a nightmare, so... I got whew, probably a total of six hours into this and I did have to adjust the throttle cable after uh, I put the car back on. Other than that, yeah, she runs good. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. I got plenty of Polaris repairs on my channel. And like always, till next time.